Today, I will share with you an account of brainwashing that is well-founded in solid social scientific principles. There are actually two totally distinct types of brainwashing, but before I get into those, I would like to review what we have all heard in the media. Perhaps you've seen some movies that portray brainwashing along these lines. A terrorist group is attempting to shoot the president, but because of tight security, the terrorists just can't get a gun anywhere near him. Then it hits them. The president's own security guards are armed to the teeth and have total access to the president. Just brainwash one of the president's guards, and he can shoot him. So the terrorists mug the guard as he's off duty, drag him to an abandoned warehouse, strip him naked, humiliate him, torture him, inject him with sodium pentothal, force him to view slides of deeply disturbing scenes with embedded subliminal messages, and they hypnotize him. Then they take a fried peanut butter sandwich and smash it into his face. You hate fried peanut butter sandwiches, they scream as they grind it into his eyes. They infuriate you. Just hearing the words sends you into a homicidal frenzy. When I count to three, you remember none of this. But the next time you hear fried peanut butter sandwiches, you will become so angry, you will shoot the speaker over and over again. When you awake, you will think we have rescued you from mugging. One, two, two three. Oh my gosh, you in bad shape. Let's take you to hospital. As the guard recovers, one of the terrorist's inside people is working on the president's speech, and she writes up a joke about fried peanut butter sandwiches. When the guard returns to duty, armed to the teeth, standing close behind as the president delivers his doctored speech, the president says, the other day, our family was having some fried peanut butter sandwiches. On cue, the guard suddenly reaches into his jacket, pulls out his gun. Amazed at seeing himself do this, he tries to wrestle down the gun with his other arm, but to no avail. He can't believe he just killed the president. This sensational story is typical of how brainwashing is portrayed in the media, but not one thing about it is correct. Not the methods of brainwashing, nor the resulting robotic control. There are actually two types of brainwashing, and neither of them are anything like this. Back in the 1970s, before political correctness took over, types of brainwashing were named after the country known for developing that type. First, consider Soviet brainwashing. Imagine you were a prisoner of war. You hear a series of gunshots accompanied by screams and dreadful moans outside your cell. Then, a Soviet officer drags you out of your cell, thrusts a script in front of your face, and demands, you will read this statement on international radio denouncing the United States for its vile corruption. If you do not, we will shoot you first in the foot, then the ankle, then your shins, and so on up your body. It will take days before you die. Or you could read this on international radio. What do you do? You denounce your country. Soviet-style brainwashing is simple coercion, very effective, but it does not make a very good news story or movie plot. You may recall the kidnapping of a 10-year-old Utah girl, Elizabeth Smart. When after months of captivity, the police came to rescue her, she denied she was Elizabeth Smart and resisted being rescued. The media latched onto this bizarre behavior and found experts who were willing to chalk it up to Stockholm Syndrome, a syndrome where captives, as CNN put it, seem to fall in love with their captors. Although there is such a thing as Stockholm Syndrome, there is a less sensational but far simpler explanation. Her captors threaten to kill mom and dad if she escapes. They hand her a phone. If you hate your mom, dial 911 right now. No wonder she refused rescue. Simple coercion. Kidnappers do not have to be brilliant to come up with this. I emailed CNN that this was a more plausible explanation than Stockholm Syndrome. They did not respond, but cruelly continued to tell the world that this little girl had fallen in love with her captors. Don't let facts get in the way of a great story. The first type of brainwashing, simple coercion. Perhaps the Soviets were satisfied with the desired public statement, even though it was not sincere. But the Chinese aimed higher. They wanted prisoners to sincerely believe what they say, even write the script themselves from the bottom of their hearts. The Chinese wanted true conversion, abandoning old beliefs in order to embrace new beliefs instead of mere coercion. The Chinese method consisted of three steps that invoke the full power of social influence. 
first, isolation. Isolate the prisoner for all support for holding on to the old belief. Allow no contact with family, friends, or even strangers who might agree with and reinforce the old belief. Second, immersion. Immerse the prisoner in a new social support system that fervently holds to the new belief. Surround him with companions who will be disgusted with his old views and will encourage him to adopt the new views. When the prisoner declares his patriotic loyalty, his new roommates say, Oh yeah, you have so much to be proud of how the U.S. disenfranchised the Indians, enslaved the blacks, and threw their own Japanese citizens into concentration camps. Really, really proud of all that. In the face of this social pressure, at first the prisoner just avoids mentioning his patriotism. Soon he recognizes its flaws. Eventually, he repudiates it. He no longer needs his roommate's influence. He is self-policing. This is the final step, internalization. He has internalized the new values, made them his own. It's not just the Chinese, though. Everybody uses this technique. Religious cults. A teenager runs away to a cult isolated from people sharing their previous views, surrounded by the new cult views, and soon they start thinking like the other cult members. This is the same method the anti-cult deprogrammers use. The teenager is forced to go back home, isolated from the cult, surrounded by the right-thinking people, until eventually he thinks like all those right-thinking people. Deprogramming is the identical process to brainwashing. When people we disagree with use it, we call it brainwashing. When people we agree with use it, we call it therapy or education. Parents rely on brainwashing all the time. I don't want you hanging around with those kids. They're a bad influence. Immerse your kids in the scout program. Soon the scout is a natural good citizen. It's all the power of social influence. The word brainwashing is unfortunate. It implies that social processes take away freedom of choice. If you believe that, then you're logically committed to believe no one has freedom of choice because social influence is everywhere. Personally, I like social influence, but then I'm surrounded by people who like it.